Rub up your engines! Well, if you watch my video on scamming people, auto scams, here's an auto scam that I didn't know about. One of your viewers, Daryl Melville, told me about it. People in my area use a plastic bottle. They wedge it on your tire. So when you drive forward or backwards, depending on where they put it, you hear a crunching sound. Then you think you ran over something and you put it back to look in a panic and then they hop in and drive your car away. You know, you got to be sharp when you're around. You hear a little crunching noises and don't get out of the car. Look behind you. You see a plastic bottle out. was just a plastic bottle. Make sure your windows are rolled up and locked because if something's playing like this, they're obviously sleaze balls. Somebody will start doing it more and more and more. Maybe this is a limited area where he lives, but hey, you run over something, just look behind you. You see, a bottle is a plastic bottle, right? Don't fall for any of these scams that let people get in your car. And above all, don't be walking down the street with little earbuds and listening to music, doo 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 doo. Somebody's gonna bonk you in the head and take your car, right? You gotta have common sense, right? And another person said, I don't know if anybody's actually done this, but they don't joke about it. they put $5 bill on your windshield, you reach over to grab it, they steal your car. Well, one guy said some people might even be putting poison on these bills. You touch the bill and you die, then they steal your car. So maybe it's a good idea not even to touch the money. If you think there's money there, just say, oh, what the hell are you going to get with five bucks these days? Nothing, right? Just turn the windshield wipers on, let it fly away. Who cares, you know? You only get a gallon and a half of gasoline. Why even bother reaching over for peanut change if you're putting your life and your valuables at risk because somebody decided to try to fool you by putting money on your windshield or by putting empty bottle, plastic bottles in front and behind your tires so they make a crunching noise. Look around and you hear a noise, yeah. Go a little further, look back. You see the plastic bottles there? Oh well, and away you go. And especially if you look back and see plastic bottles and some sleazy character standing around looking at you. Well, you know, old Elon Musk said, yeah, I'm making a cyber truck. People are going to buy it. Well, they aren't yet because their launch is delayed by two things. Battery range and the stainless steel body had problems that they're having. Like I said, I guess the guy watched Back to the Future too much and he thought DeLoreans, he's going to make it out of stainless steel. Well, maybe he didn't realize stainless steel is relatively heavy, right? It's going to probably weigh over three tons, well over 6,000 pounds. And of course, the range is going to be less because it weighs more. They're having problems with the batteries. They're having problems with the stainless steel body. The guy just comes up with these ideas flippantly and then engineers have to put them into reality and it's not working out too well. You still can't buy a Cybertruck. Let's see, as of this video, October, they were supposed to be delivering these things in September. That still hasn't happened. They've already given up with a bulletproof glass, and now the engineers are scrambling to try to make the vehicles lighter because the stainless steel bodies way more. I can't wait on the things they actually come out if they ever do, because they're using stainless steel. One of the big problems with the DeLoreans were they made cheap stainless steel. Stainless steel is steel that's made with a certain percentage of nickel, right? Nickel's expensive. So they didn't use enough, and a lot of these DeLoreans ended up rusting. So the stainless steel tests, I can't wait till they come out and they start rusting. I will be laughing, howling my rear ends off if they start making these tests of cyber trucks with stainless steel, then they go up north in the salt in the winter and they start rusting. I would just be laughing my rear end off on this one. I can't wait. Will you hurry up and start selling them to people? I need some more material here, Elon. Come on. You know, let's let's get the ball rolling here so I can show people reality from fantasy. Well, Tesla's got a really low leasing price for their Model 3. They can pay as little as 250 bucks a month. Now, I had a guy bring me a Volvo electric car and they wanted 750 bucks a month to lease that Volvo. Well, the Model 3 now, they've lowered it to 250 bucks a month. Why so low? Because they can't sell them and they want to reach certain milestones and leasing on their little bean counting counts as the car that's been sold, even though it's not really sold, but it counts as a unit produced and then sold to people. Now, of course, there are all kinds of 
asterisk. Numero uno. It's a $4,500 down payment. So that's $4,500. So, huh, yeah, add that each month, too. That's a lot of money, too, right? So you got that. Plus, you can only drive 10,000 miles a year or you pay extra. And it's only a two year contract for two years. Plus, you can't buy it back. You can't keep the car at the end of the contract. So there's a lot of if, ands, and buts on it. Uh, the point that he's lowered it to $250 a month shows you hey he wants to get those things out there he's lowered the prices of the cars now he's really dropped the prices of the leases because he wants to get all these numbers out there a lot of it has to do with how he can cash in to keep a stock value high right i mean it's not something that's sustainable you can't make a car to cost that much and lease it for 250 she's like i said the volvo they wanted 750 bucks a month to lease it right you can see something really squirrely going on with tesla to try to keep his numbers numbers up. Lower in prices, giving these weird leases that make it look like he's selling more when he's not really selling them, they're leasing them. But you know how that goes. As they say, there's lies, there's damn lies, and there's statistics. So the statistics of how many cars were sold is often kind of misleading situation. You get into numbers, you can prove just about anything. But in this case, he's lowered the price quite a bit, so it shows you. Things are shaking down at Tesla, not up. Mr. Guru Little said, Scotty, what are your favorite car programs? Well, you know, the only one I really like is the old Top Gear. The old Top Gear, the English guys, right? I like them. And now they do the Grand Tour on Amazon. I like those guys. They're funny. The American version, I think, is a piece of crap, you know? And they had Hollywood stars and crap on. It was garbage, right? I like the three English guys still. Hey, they got some funny stuff to say, you know? It's, it's, let's face the facts. Other than that, I really don't watch all that much. I spend my time fixing cars, analyzing cars. I don't spend my spare time on it, so. But I will watch those guys. They're funny. Plus, they know a lot about the car industry, too. Shadow Man says, Scotty, why does my 2011 Accord starter only make a quick whirling noise when it's cold outside? All right. Well, they're electric motors, and as they age, electricity doesn't like colder weather, and it will be whirring because the bearings are probably wearing a little bit, but hey, I had a car like that. It whirred in the winter, didn't whir in the summer, and it went three or four years before it finally broke, and I had to replace the starter, so, you know, what the heck? If it still starts, who really cares? You know, the bearings do wear out inside, but like I say, if it starts and then the summer doesn't even make the noise, the wear is so small, as long as it starts the car, huh, who cares? Sports got 05 says, Scotty, how do I stop cylinder deactivation on my 16 GMC 5.3? Thanks. All right. You can, there's various kits you can buy. Some of them you just plug them into the OBD ports. I really don't believe in those because the OBD port is not made to be plugged in the whole time you drive it. It's for diagnostic only, really. But there's lots of kits. You can Google it online. And if you have a trusted mechanic, just pay him to do it. He'll know which kits are good and he can install it. And then your engines won't wear out as fast. You get a little bit worse gas mileage, but hey, the engine will last longer. JK Turtle says, Scotty, should I get a 2010 to 14 Ford Mustang V6 or 2015 to 21 EcoBoost L4? All right. I would get the V6 by far. Those inline fours are horrible engines as they age. They're turbocharged. They're EcoBoost. They have GDI pressure in them. They wear out. I've seen those engines break as little as 65,000 miles. They are not good in the long run. And you're talking about getting a used one, right? Might have had the heck beat out of it, and it'll be even worse than if it was even taken care of. I have customers that own those that took care of them like fanatics, and they still fell apart before their time. So if you're buying a used one and a previous owner didn't maintain it, it's going to fall apart part even faster. The V6s, they last longer, right? They don't have as much horsepower, but they last longer and they're a lot smoother drive. This four-cylinder takes a lot to get them rolling. They got to rev up high. They, they just don't ride right as far as I'm concerned. Dave Zalona says, Scotty, why does my wife's 2011 Santa Fe V6 3.5 rattle on a cold start? A lot of times you start them up and they rattle. If it goes, that's piston rod knock. And that's bad. That means the bearings are wearing out. Eventually, the engine's going to blow. But if it just kind of rattles and then goes away, it's usually that either the timing chain is worn or the timing chain tensioner that pushes it. It's carboned up, and then when it warms up, it pops in place and stops rattling. My advice is to clean it first. That might fix it. My friend Bernie in Albuquerque, he's got an oil flush. You put it in the oil, 
you rev it to 2000 RPM for like 25, 30 minutes. Then you change the oil and filter. If it's carboned up and the tensioner stuck, that will unfree it. And I've seen that fix a bunch of them. Now, if it didn't, it would mean it's physically worn and you'd have to rebuild the engine, timing chain, tensioner, lots of stuff can actually make it rattle like that. So, take all that consideration and pray it's not the which means the rods are knocking because the bearings are worn out and you're going to have to either rebuild the engine soon or get rid of it fast. So, if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.